Transitioning from former WEC commentator, or commenter Frank Mirror um, being at a point where he's likely to retire, we got news that arguably the best WEC fighter ever, Miguel Torres, has decided to retire. And at this point in his career, it makes a lot of sense. He'd been on a pretty big downslope after leaving the UFC. Towards the end of his run in the UFC, it was getting pretty rough for him, too. Uh, at his peak, I believe he was 37-1 and heading into the Brian Bowles fight, but just a ridiculous record. Um, when he was at his prime, very aggressive, went after a lot of guys, was able to get a lot of finishes. Um, really really good black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, pretty good striking. Uh, unfortunately, when he lost the fight to Brian Bowles in the WEC, at that point, he made a move to TriStar and kind of got a little bit more, a little more tactical about how he fought. Like to kind of hide behind his jab, but he wasn't the same aggressive fighter, and he wasn't really as effective ever since making that switch. Now, obviously, for him, with all the shots he had taken up to that point, with your 38 fights or so, he, I'm sure he was feeling it a bit towards the end of his career. He was getting knocked around pretty bad too. So I, I don't blame the guy for trying to fight safer, but obviously that wasn't going to lead to the best outcomes for him that he was seeing earlier in the WEC days. Now, obviously, with the WEC, technically for the WEC champion, you weren't a UFC champion, but as fans, we all know, if you're a WEC champion at 35 or 45, you're really the UFC champion. The UFC just didn't have the weight class. So had the UFC absorbed the weight class as much sooner, we could be talking about Miguel Torres like we talk about GSP, like we talk about Anderson Silva, like we talk about Demetrius Johnson for their long title reigns. Unfortunately for Torres, it was under the WEC banner, so he's not going to get that kind of attention. He's not going to be talked about in that way, and that's that's really a bummer because he was so great at his peak. But, he, I mean, even after the loss to Brian Bowles, there were still a lot of good fights from him. He had a fight in the UFC after they were absorbed where he had won against Mighty Mouse Johnson. That was a fight where the decision ended up going in Johnson's favor, but it was one of those decisions where when you watch the fight, you're like, how the hell did Johnson get the win? Uh, when Johnson was able to get Torres down, Torres was really good at getting sweeps, throwing up submission attempts. I mean, it, it was one of those fights where you feel like if it was watched under modern eyes, Miguel Torres gets the win. But it was kind of back in the day where you'd have a wrestler get in, they'd take a guy down, they'd bury their head in the other guy's chest and throw arm punches while fighting off a bunch of submission attempts. And the judges would say, okay, well, the guy had top position, so clearly he's winning, when in reality, all the offense is coming from the bottom. So... Unfortunately for him, he didn't get that win. It'd be nice at this point for him to be able to say he's got a win over a guy who's being called the greatest of all time. But either way, great career for Miguel Torres. It's unfortunate that after he left the UFC, I believe it was a kickboxing fight where his knee just got blown out. But either way, he's got his academy out in Indiana. He's He'll be said he can definitely make a good amount of money doing that. He'll, he'll be comfortable. Granted, you, you wish he could say he was a UFC champion, kind of use that to promote his seminars and promote his gym, but... Either way, I'm sure he'll, he'll be fine heading towards the next phase of life. And as a fan, I really, really appreciate what he did during his time in the WEC. Wish him the best.